Our next session is a motivational speech by a renowned spiritual personality, His Grace Swami Sri Sampati Dasa from Scon Bangalore. We, we welcome sir you today to, to today's conference. We request MD and CEO sir and ED sir to please welcome Swami Sri Sampati Dasa. His Grace Swami Sri Sampati Dasa is the president of Hare Krishna movement and the Akshay Patra Foundation Pune Maharashtra. He is also member of the executive council and head of youth empowerment program in Iskon Bangalore. Swami ji is the member of management council of Vrindavan Chandrodaya Mandir which is world's tallest temple. He is also rector of Basil Woods International School Bangalore. Swami ji did his BE in BMS College Engineering Bangalore and worked as a design engineer in Tata group of companies being inspired by the teaching of Srila Pr uh, Prabhupada he joined Iskon Bangalore as a full time missionary and has been serving the organization since more than a decade he has designed and conducted personality enrichment workshop to more than 5000 youngsters he is all he is known for his inspirational talks based on philosophy of bhagavad gita Sir, just to give you a brief about the audience present here, uh, we are having uh, circle heads from 24 circles of our Canara Bank and regional head from 176 regional offices. Along with that, the, uh, along with that, there are wing heads from head office and other executives are also present. And in the era of technological advancement, we have connected our wings in uh, head office, which are located at various buildings through video conferencing. So they will also be uh, listening to you. So audience is huge. And these people are coming from uh, various states, so they'll be benefited with your speech. Over to you, sir, for a session. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Namaste to all of you. Very happy being amidst these bright minds of India. This is the very tough time, afternoon, after the lunch. I'll try my best to motivate and uh, we have heard or we have grown up hearing the statement wealth is lost nothing is lost health is lost something is lost but if character is lost everything is lost in today's world we see people build wealth incredibly and Kendra Bank is one of such organization that helps people manage their wealth, build their wealth, expand their wealth. That's amazing. But you're all part of this great organization dealing with higher responsibilities and innumerable people. It's very important that we take care of our health, which involves physical health, and emotional health, and also, the most importantly, our own character. Today, I would like to present a small incident from Ramayana and see from this perspective, emotional health and the character perspective, so that we take home some important motivational lesson to uh, implement in our day-to-day -day life. This story which I'm going to tell, probably everyone is aware of that, but we'll look at it from a different perspective. As we all know, Ram, Lakshman, brothers, both of them, and Sita, the wife of Ram, all of them have come to forest because of the request of Kaikeyi and Maharaj Dasharatha's order. For 14 years of banishment, they are in forest. 13 years have passed by. After 13 years, this incident happens. Ravan has decided to kidnap Sita and he has engaged one of his associates, Maricha, to come as a golden deer to allure Sita. And when Sita sees the golden deer, she is enchanted by it and she requested Ram to go behind and get that. And when Ram chases the deer and shoots an arrow, the Maricha makes 
sound calling out in the voice of rama ha sita ha lakshmana please save me you know like that and hearing this sound sita becomes very fearful she gets scared ram is in danger she is a wife after all she loves her husband that's how she has come to forest with him and the sound is coming again and again sita lakshman sita in a very painful way it is coming out hearing this sita is getting panicked she is getting worried she is scared and she looks at lakshman who was there he is he is seeming to be very peaceful and she says lakshman there is danger yes mother sita please tell me and she says your brother ram is in danger he is he is calling out for help lakshman says oh don't worry ram can never be in danger sita says no can you hear the sound it's coming again and again ram is calling out for help we must go you must go and help ram then lakshman again doesn't take it seriously he says no don't worry ram can never be in danger is very powerful he can protect himself nobody can bring harm to him don't worry but sita repeatedly request lakshman again and again and at one point Sita becomes very angry at Lakshman. She loses her cool, and now she shouts at Lakshman. If you read the words in Valmiki Ramayana, the kind of words that Sita uses are very, very heartbreaking. She looks at Lakshman and she says, "I know why you are not going. I know the reason why you are not going. Actually, you have been waiting for this kind of a moment in your life." you want ram to die in this danger so that you can enjoy me one day and you have come to forest with us with this intention only this is your real reason that's why even ram is calling again and again for your help you are not going because this is what you are waiting when you hear when lakshman heard this his heart was broken let me just ask you i want all of you to put yourself into lakshman's shoes and think 13 years he has done service to ram and sita nobody asked that lakshman should go to forest he volunteered himself that i want to come with you people he was a prince he was living very happily in ayodhya with all royal facilities there was no requirement for him to come and be in the forest and take all the difficulties of the forest life and he did it simply because he respected and he loved ram and sita and for such a person you make character assassinating statement that you i know you are ill intentions i know why you have come that was really heartbreaking and not just that he came to forest 13 years the ramayana says lakshman he never rested during the day time he was busy in taking care of the requirements of ram and sita and night he was not resting he was actually guarding like a security guard so that there are no dangers for ram and sita's you know sleep so when somebody works so hard for you for your organization or for your family and after 13 years of working so hard giving up their personal life lakshman gave up his personal life by the way he was newly married to his wife urmila and he left his wife urmila in ayodhya and he came he never stayed with his wife he never enjoyed royal facilities and day and night he was serving and after doing all these things somebody doubts your character somebody makes a statement which questions your character it can happen to all of us you can work hard to your boss you can you can keep aside your personal life your health your family and always prioritize your work your service and suddenly you go through this kind of an experience your question the character is being doubted it was really heartbreaking what would any one of you do may i ask any one of you to share your inputs if you were lakshmana when somebody makes such an allegation on your character after 13 years of hard work what would you have done in that situation anybody likes to volunteer 
what would you do if you were Lakshman? I hear some, you, you, yes, yes sir, please go. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you are saying, I know myself well, even if somebody makes an allegation, I don't mind it. Is that what you are trying to say? Thank you. Thank you for your uh, response. Anyone else like to contribute? Yes, at the last. Okay, thank you so much. Please be seated. Actually, when Lakshman heard this, he, he was really, you know, it was heartbreaking to hear. He immediately left the place. He said, okay, you want me to go? I don't think Ram is in danger, but because you are insisting, I'll go. And uh, so he says, please be very careful. This is not something, uh, it's not a normal place. It's full of demons. So be very careful. And he goes. And when he actually reaches the place, he goes behind the sound and he reaches the venue. He sees Ram is, he's okay, he's all right. And there is this uh, demon who is who's making this sound and he looks at Ram and Ram says, Hey, Lakshman, why did you come here? I told you to be there and take care of Sita. And said, no, we were hearing this someone making sound in your voice and calling out for help. And Sita insisted that I must come. Then Ram says, no, there seems to be a huge conspiracy. I think there is a danger for Sita. Let's go. So they come back. And as you all know the famous story, Sita is not there. By then already Ravan has come and kidnapped the Sita. So then Ram searches, Lakshman searches Sita everywhere. They couldn't find. And then Ram becomes so upset for not finding Sita. He's upset transforms into anger and now he shouts at Lakshman. He says, you are such an incompetent person. I gave you one job to be here and take care of Sita and that also you have not done properly. You are a Nalaik. Just see, somebody is doubting your character and the other person is doubting your competence. After 13 years of hard work, after 13 years of sacrifice, after 13 years of no rest, if this is the reward I get in my life, what should I do? How do I, I mean, what do I do in my life? It can happen in our personal life, in my family life, in my organization, among our friend circle, it can happen. We all can be in Lakshman's place at any time. Right? So, so Lakshman, one hand, he was, he was attacked, you know, on his character. On the other side, somebody is questioning his competence, his ability. Right? So, how did Lakshman deal with the situation? That will tell us the life lesson if such a situation come, and it is very obvious because human means we go through this kind of situation. It can be small, it can be big. Sometimes our character is being questioned. Sometimes our competence is being questioned. So how do we deal with it? Actually, as you all know, Lakshman was not disturbed. What made him not get disturbed? In fact, Lakshman went with Ram all the way to Lanka to get Sita who made accusation on his own character. Somebody generally what, oh, she was making so much accusation on me. I don't like to come and help her. Or somebody might have said, you doubt my ability, no? Why should I come with you? You go on your own, find your wife. No, he didn't do all those things. He went ahead and he gave his 100%. How did it happen? It happened because there is something called emotional bank account. There's a famous author called Stephen R. Covey. He has written a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And he mentions this one aspect called emotional bank account. Since it's a bank, I thought of bringing this bank account. But it's a very different type of a bank. And this bank is called 
emotional bank. And this account, whether you want, whether you don't want, everybody has an account, emotional bank account. And who opens? We open this bank account with every human being we have relationship with. If you have anybody with whom you have relationship, that means you have an emotional bank account with that person. So as you all know, you're all, I mean, decision makers. In bank account, what we do? We deposit and we withdraw. So what do we do in emotional bank account? So we deposit emotions and we withdraw emotions. Only two things happen. We deposit emotion and we withdraw emotion. What happened in this situation? Sita or Ram, they were withdrawing emotions. When somebody comes to withdraw, no, we are not so happy. We are very happy when somebody deposits. Right? That's good for us. I mean, so that's how even an emotional bank account is like that. Nobody likes withdrawal. Withdrawal is always taking out. It is like, you know, being heavy with somebody, chastising somebody, being angry at somebody, that is all withdrawing. It's all withdrawing. Like, you know, if somebody comes to you, give a check, or they want to withdraw the money, but they have no money in their account. So immediately you will stop it. You say, hey, this is not possible. We can't allow this because you don't have enough of a balance. Similarly, in relationship, unless we have made sufficient positive deposits, Every interaction when we do, actually it, it can be a withdrawal or it can be a deposit. Every time when I talk to somebody, every time when I meet somebody, every time when I see somebody's face, either I'm depositing or I'm withdrawing. This is a, one, one incident in my own life. There was one person who was working in our department. He said, uh, oh no, you know, I'm not very comfortable talking to you. Why? Why is that? Did I say anything wrong? No, actually, you know, every time when, when you walk, you don't look at me and smile. So I'm not very comfortable. You see, even we are not aware, but still we are making deposit. We are not aware, we are still withdrawing something. So even seeing somebody can be a deposit or a withdrawal. Talking to somebody can be a deposit or a withdrawal. So everyone is maintaining this emotional bank account. And based on our deposit, people will relate with us. Okay, I have one crore rupees balance and I withdraw some 1,000 rupees from it. It's not a big issue. Similarly, when this incident happened, we must know it happened after 13 years of one of us. So what happened in the 13 years? How did Ram, you know, behave with Lakshman in the 13 years? How did Sita behave with Lakshman in the last 13 years? Based on that, Lakshman takes decision. It is not always one incident. It is not always what one person speak. At that moment, it is, we have a huge emotional backdrop for us. So, in the last 13 years, Ram and Sita, they share an excellent relationship with Lakshman. They have an amazing positive relationship with Lakshman. They are caring, they are affectionate, they are loving, they are sacrificing each other. With all this background, when somebody doesn't withdrawal, then naturally what we do is, we would like to see when person speaks, what is the intention behind this person? Why is he so heavy? You know, generally we all expect, when, when we talk, we say, hey, don't look at my words, see my intentions. If you want people to see your intentions, it could be at home. You may be speaking to your own family members, it could be your spouse, our children, or anyone. You want, always we all expect people to look at our intentions. People will see our intentions only when we have sufficient deposit in our emotional bank account. Otherwise, they will only see your words. You come with a check or you come with some request, I'll only see that. If you have sufficient past deposits, positive deposits, then people will go beyond what you are speaking and they will be able to see our intentions behind what we are speaking. So Lakshman was able to see the intention of these two people. Is Sita really accusing me of my character? Or that she is so concerned for Ram's safety, 
her concern for Ram's safety, her feeling for Ram's safety is what making her speak these words. Not really she means to talk to me like that. What is the intention of Sita? Does she really have an intention? You see, this is what is called emotional bank account. And when Ram, when he says, Lakshman, you're not like, or you're incompetent, does really Ram think so? Because there are so many instances where Lakshman has done big, big things for uh, Ram. He has, he has achieved many things along with him. So it is not a fact that Lakshman is incompetent, is definitely a very competent person. But what makes Ram say those statements? It is simply because Ram was upset and disturbed not finding his wife Sita. So when people go through a certain disturbing situation, they make some statements. Like sometimes we say, get lost to somebody. Do we really mean those people should get lost? Should we really go by the words or should we go by the intention? We all know we should go by intention. But at that spur of the moment, if you expect the people under you or for you yourself to go by intention, then we must make sure that we have a strong emotional bank account. And this emotional bank account is what saves us in this kind of a crisis. And what is this emotional bank account? Love caring, affection, these all come free of cost. Today we have to pay money for everything practically. Uh, you know, about 15, 20 years back, nobody would believe that drinking water we have to pay and drink one day. Now every water bottle which is there on your table, we have paid for it. It's not, it doesn't come free of cost. So today for breathing good oxygen we have to pay, for drinking water we have to pay, for everything we have to pay. Something that we don't have to pay, is positive emotions in our life. They come free of cost. When you look at somebody, just smile at them. Free of cost. We don't have to spend for it. Right? And when you meet somebody, just speak good about them. Of course, everybody has positives and negatives. Whenever we meet, just say a few things. Hey, today you're looking great. Today your dress is looking good or whatever. We have hundreds of things to speak. So just an effort to deposit and the Stephen R. Covey says one simple principle. What is that? For every hundred deposits, you make one withdrawal. If you want to become angry at somebody, if you want to be heavy with somebody, then make sure that you have already made hundred positive emotional deposit. That means hundred times you appreciate it, hundred times you have smiled at him, only then one, you, once you can be angry at that person. If you're always angry, if you're always this one, then there are chances that you may lose that person forever. So the point here is 13 years, Ram and Sita made positive deposit with Lakshman. And that day, they were heavy. They were angry. They were upset. They made all the statements. And that did not disturb Lakshman at all. Lakshman, in fact, went ahead with same Ram to get the same Sita back without any grudge in the heart. So this simple life lesson, which we all know, just requires a simple practice in a day-to-day -day life. What is that? That make sure on day-to-day -day basis, as much as possible, we make positive deposits in our emotional bank account. This is one simple lesson we can learn. In next five minutes, I would like to give another small lesson and complete today's talk is when the importance, one important lesson that we learn is when the news that Ram is going to be uh, going to be made king of Ayodhya, the news reaches Kaike, the stepmother of Ram, and she's so happy to know this. Yes, Ram is, uh, is the right person to become the next king, but Mantara spoils the mind of Kaike. She says, oh no, this is not good for you, it's not good for your son Bharat. And then what happens is, then Kaiki actually believes and she, uh, pro she asks Dasharatha to send Ayo Ram to Ayodhya. See, what one very simple lesson we can learn here is, when Kaikai went ahead with this strategy of sending uh, Ram to Ayodhya, look at the consequences. The consequences were too heavy. Dasharatha died, her, her husband died. He couldn't tolerate this. And Ayodhya became against Kaikai. 
and Ram went away to forest. One simple thing that Kaikai didn't do is she did not consult enough before taking decision. She took a decision of sending Ram to forest without sufficiently consulting, clarifying. In our life, it could be at our family level or it could be organization level. Many times we assume. Kaikai assumed that Ram becoming king is not good for me and my son. It's an assumption. It's not reality. But she assumed it to be a reality. And she concluded and she went ahead without clarifying, discussion, consultation. And what is the result? The result was a disaster. Ayodhya became empty. Ram went to forest. Dasharatha died. And Bharat rejected his own mother. I don't want to accept you as my mother. You are a disaster. So she didn't get anything finally. So many times when we have to make certain decision, it is highly important, especially when the decision makers make decision, we must make sure that we have sufficiently consulted, we have sufficiently clarified, we have sufficiently explained and, and uh, explored all the available options. Maybe there were many other options. If Kaikai explored it, maybe the Ayodhya could have been divided into two, one for Bharat, one for Ram. There could have been many more options, but she did not explore any option, didn't clarify. So one lesson we learn from this incident is consult, explore, clarify, do not just go ahead with assumption. So with these two simple life lessons from Ramayana, I would wish you all, all the best with good health and a good future ahead and pray to Lord to bless all of you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Swamiji, for your motivating and enlightening word. Uh, the fact that you started with a story, I think for today's meeting, there wouldn't have been a more relevant story than this being this meeting, a uh, review meeting, which is done for the evaluation of performance. Uh, as a part of Green Initiative, we request you to please accept a green gift from our organization. We thank you for your time uh, and uh, the valuable guidance you have shared with us.